Raw Talent Academy um, launched a business after working with Lord Sugar for two years, following my success on The Apprentice. Um, I've been a, an employer of salespeople for the last seven years. Ten, uh, ten years of my career have been uh, spent within the recruitment industry. Um, so I decided to uh, put both of them together and, and launch the Raw Talent Academy, which is effectively an aim for uh, small and medium prize enterprises and corporate organisations to use as a vehicle to set up their own sales academies to effectively grow their own staff. So sales, in your mind, it's an art. It's something that can be taught, is it? It's not something you're born with, necessarily. Absolutely. I think you need to be uh, born with the right attributes, the raw attributes, uh, the attributes around the desire, the ability to uh, want to work hard, to succeed, that kind of winning mentality, effectively. I think cer certain people just have them and certain people don't. You, you can coach certain skills with people. And I think certainly with sales, you can coach people um, into better sales. I mean, certainly over the last kind of 10, 13 years or so of my, of my professional career, um, I've got better as a salesperson, I would say, uh, and that's through learning and development, absolutely. I get the feeling that you're not overwhelmed by qualifications or people with degrees. Yeah, I mean, uh, for, for me, my background is all about um, you know, uh, hard work. I mean, I left school when I was 17 years old um, after a one-year course. Um, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So university wasn't for me. I was never academic enough. That said, I'm not, I'm not one to say you don't need a degree, you don't need to go to university. I think each to their own. What I'm saying is a lot of employers at the moment will actually screen or sift based on have you got a degree or have you not. Now, for certain roles, that is absolutely fundamental, being a doctor, a lawyer, you know, professional services. But certainly from a sales point of view, you need to have them raw attributes. And I'm looking to people to have them raw attributes, to come and apply, to be part of the uh, Raw Talent Academy, and then we can focus on getting them people a career in sales. So how does the service work? You work within a company, do you training people? Is that how it works? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there's three phases to, to, to the service. Uh, the first phase is actually the search and selection process, whereby we will actually go out, we will find raw talent, uh, we will bring it through our uh, interview process, which is uh, competency-based interviewing, uh, understanding if they've got the right um, attributes, the raw attributes, that the desire, them skills, that, that intellect, that ability to be able to sniff a deal, and that, that work-hard ethic. Um, and the second phase is really bringing the client into play when we actually run audition days. And we run um, audition days for the, the talent that's actually come through the door and we actually see, get to see them working. So we put them through business tasks effectively like, like The Apprentice. I'm using my experience from The Apprentice to actually to, to, to formulate such an idea. Uh, so whereby the clients themselves will actually be able to see their talent doing business tasks, how they work under pressure, how they're working within the team, can they sell, uh, can they um, actually uh, communicate well, um, all of the different attributes. And um, Once phase two is complete, phase three will happen when the client decides to take them on board and then we will actually go for a learning development program with them uh, whilst they're on the job. You say on your website that every firm is selling in some form and every, every firm needs salespeople, even if they're kind of it's very small, they even sole traders. Yeah. Do you think that's accepted well enough in Britain? Do you think the, the importance of sales and salespeople is accepted enough? Great question, Mike. Maybe not so much, Mike. I mean, I think that sales has been a dirty word. There's absolutely no doubt about it. You know, that's why I'm quite em overemphasizing the word sales. You know, yes, we can have a business career. Yes, we can have a, a, a career in marketing or we can have a career. You can sex it up in any way, which way. But fundamentally, every single business that I've ever been in, ever worked in and launched in my own company now, the centerpiece is sales. Because whether or not you're a one-man band, you're selling yourself, uh, whether or not you're actually even just going to a job interview and having to sell, you know, Know, your key qualities what you're having to do there is at some level having to sell um, whether or not you're selling a multi uh, uh, multinational company's brand or whether or not you're selling uh, a product for a multinational company again everything is to come back to do with sales so yeah I think it's fundamental that people need to learn the skills of sales um, and I don't think it's widely accepted enough you know even even in the roots if you like of our curriculum uh, within within uh, you know 16 to 18 year olds in further education we should be looking at potentially um, making some sales provisions or business enterprise provisions in order for, for these guys to actually go out there and use them skills once they're getting a job or once they're starting up their own company, for example. How important is the ethical side to you when you're teaching? Because I think we're all aware, we've all experienced kind of heavy-handed sales or sales of a product which doesn't live up to the kind of hype. How important is honest sales to you? 
hugely important. I think you know what I would term that as consultative sale. Um, you know, I ran a uh, recruitment um, business which turned over thirty-two million pound before before I went into the Apprentice, um, and uh, all of my guys were taught around consultative selling. You know, it's not about going in there and trying to close a deal no matter what happens. Um, it's about giving the customer what they need and in order to give your customer what they need you need to find out what the customer wants so it's about identifying probing asking questions understanding what the customer needs because at the, at the end of the day Mike if you can provide a service or a product that the customer wants at a good price and the customer's happy and you're happy then everybody's a winner I mean, let, let's let's be honest I mean, I'm quite passionate about the fact that I, I believe the best always come from within and you can use a couple of examples here, such as Lewis Hamilton, for example, driving for McLaren. He's been there since he was eight. Stephen Gerrard uh, playing for Liverpool uh, Football Club. He's been there since he was nine. So there's always comparisons that you can make. And of course, I'm not saying that goes across every blanket, but it certainly goes across most of. And if we can grow our own staff in sales, I think we can have a better opportunity in the future. Because you want to retain the sales staff. Once you've trained them, you want to retain them, don't you? Because sales traditionally has a very high turnover, doesn't it? Huge high turnover of staff. Retention is very, very difficult. And as I said before, seven years for myself being a employer of salespeople, I've built sales teams from scratch in both recruitment industry and the advertising industry. And as you say, it's notoriously very difficult to not only find them of what I would call buy them off the shelf effectively, but also to retain them thereafter. So what you want to be able to, uh, to have is, is a mechanism, if you like, an academy in order for whereby you always produce good salespeople. And if they do inevitably move on after a period of time, maybe three three, four, five years down the line, you can replace them with people that you've grown yourself. I think it's hugely important. Finally, and more generally, how do you think it is being an entrepreneur in Britain at the moment, both politically, change of government, and equally just within the economy as it stands at the moment? I think there's huge amounts of uh, change going on within the coalition government. Um, I think we're seeing that already, um, even on the graduate side. Uh, at the moment, there's uh, 80 graduates to every one job, for example. Um, being an entrepreneur, launching my own business, I felt it was a good opportunity. I think we need to look at it in two ways. The private sector have just gone through the ringer effectively over the last two, two and a half years, um, and we've come out the other side, uh, or the private sector have come out the other side. So it's a great opportunity now to actually grasp that and, and, and start working in a, in a uh, in the business world that's probably stripped away a lot of stuff that wasn't needed to be there and, and the public sector needs to learn from that as well uh, this is probably a good opportunity for them uh, whilst they're going through the, um, the, the recession as such um, to strip out some unwanted processes uh, to, to kind of if you like cleanse the unwanted areas and actually to come out the other side a leaner meaner machine uh, a lot of the uh, people that I talk to at the moment might talk to me about how can we deliver more for less our customers want to see more for less I think it's important that we actually retain our current customer base in tough times and make sure that we're, we're giving our current customers what we need and not just focus on new business all of the time and again that comes back into selling consultatively and development of our current customers as well